Governor Larry Hogan, thanks for joining On the Hill. It's great to be with you. Good to see you again. Governor, about a year ago, you said you wanted to cross the finish line strong in your, in your final year. Do you think you've done that? You know, I'm pretty satisfied that we actually did run through the tape and uh, we landed the plane. You know, uh, I think we left it all on the field. It's not like we solved every single problem that was out there, but I, I feel a sense of satisfaction that uh, that we actually uh, got a lot of the things done that we said we were going to do. The state is in much better shape than when we found it. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we just kept working right to the end. We did, there was no, uh, no quit in us, I'll tell you that. It's a weird thing to ask people why they think they're popular, because the answer sometimes comes off self-serving. But throughout your term, Marylanders have given you pretty high popularity ratings and I'm curious why you think that is that wasn't necessarily a given at the start of your term a Republican in a Democratic state why have your constituents responded to you in the way they have well uh, first of all I appreciate the fact that uh, the people of Maryland after eight years still seem to be happy with the job that we're doing and it's you know I wish I was popular back in high school there's this not really popularity but job approval so you know, 74% of job approval. That means they think that our whole team uh, did a pretty good job and they like the direction that the state is in. Could that be the way you talk about things? Because even though you've been a politician now for eight years, you tend to kind of say things in a, in a very direct way. I think so. I mean, people, I'm a pretty direct, uh, tell it like it is guy. And, and people say to me that they appreciate that. They, you know, I often hear, you know, that uh, I'm a lifelong Democrat, but I voted for you because, and I don't always agree with you even, but um, I think you tell it like it is. And I trust in, or they say, you seem like a regular guy. And I say, well, that's because I am a regular guy. You know, at the end of a term, it's not unusual to look back at this time. Um, think about the Baltimore riots, your own cancer diagnosis. Were those the toughest times for you in this job? Well, those were tough ones, uh, you know, but I don't know. I think COVID probably was the toughest, uh, and that came even later. So <clears throat> we had all these plans and things we were going to focus on turning the economy around and getting Maryland to be more competitive. And, you know, we, we focused on that. But 89 days after being governor, uh, we had the worst violence in 47 years break out in our largest city. I had to go keep the people of Baltimore safe and restore calm and peace to the city. And, uh, and you know, we declared a state of emergency and sent in the 4,000 members of the National Guard and 1,000 police officers. And 60 days later, I had only been governor for five months when I got this life-threatening uh, cancer diagnosis. How bad did your health get? It was pretty bad. Uh, you know, I, uh, it, it, this it hit me from out of the blue, but I had 40 or 50 tumors you know, all over my body. Uh, it was about as far as you could get uh, without it being, you know, you know, a very difficult situation, stage four. And I mean, you know, I did six months or five or six months of off and on 24 hour a day chemotherapy. And it was, uh, you know, I kept working and I kept trying to reassure everybody it was gonna be okay, but it was, a, it was pretty, pretty tough. Yeah, I remember that time you had the opportunity to be blessed by the Pope. I've got to imagine that's got to rank up there with some of the best times. It was, uh, it was an incredible experience. Uh, you know, the, I, I got a, uh, uh, the Cardinal reached out and said the Pope is going to be in town speaking to Congress and he, you know, he, he invited me to, he, the Pope wanted to meet me and yeah. bless me and so I was, it was an incredible honor. I, I got to go down at Catholic Charities and, and the Pope uh, gave me a blessing and then I got to see him off at Andrews Air Force Base. Uh, the, while I was getting you know, with the Pope, pre the president saw the White House was trying to get in touch with us and asking if I would go with John Kerry to see him off, see Papal One take off from Andrews because the president and vice president were busy. And, you know, so I was out there, you know, on the, on the uh, tarmac with, with uh, lots of local kids chanting Hogan Strong as the, as the Pope blessed me again for the second time in one day. You've obviously now become the speculation of a lot of questions about your future. Um, presidency is something that's come up often. I don't think you're going to announce to me that you're running for president right well, now. Well, why not? But, well, <laughs> if you'd like to, go ahead. But, but what is your process? When do you think you might have something to say about that? You know, I, I, I don't think I've ever said that I was interested in running for president, but a lot of people certainly have. Uh, encouraged me to do it. Everywhere I go, they talk to me. And I think going back to what you were saying earlier, 
uh, being one of the top governors in America and having been successful in the bluest state in the country, people say, hey, why, can't, why couldn't uh, you do that right down the road in Washington? <laughs> you know, I know you talk a lot about Ronald Reagan, and as a president, he meant a lot to you. But does the party that Ronald Reagan led still exist? Well, that's what I think we're trying to find out. Um, you know, I spoke at the Reagan Institute in D.C. Uh, in November of 20, right after the election and said we were at a uh, time for choosing and we could continue to go down the road we were heading or we had to return to a more Reagan-esque big tent uh, party that had a hopeful positive message that appealed to more Americans. And I think we've, we're starting to see the fever break. We're starting to see finally move in that direction. And I've been saying for a couple of years now that eventually uh, the Trump influence is going to d diminish and people are going to be looking for new leadership and there's no question that that's now finally starting to happen. Does that apply to the Maryland Republican Party as well because there's been some struggles of late? Well it's, look they didn't follow the playbook that was successful in our state and we are the bluest state in America. Uh, Donald Trump lost this state by 33 points, much more than California or New York or you know, Oregon or Washington. Uh, so it, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough what place to get elected as a Republican. You, you know, basically, in order to be governor twice, I had to win all the Republicans, all of the independents, and about 30 percent of the Democrats. And uh, unfortunately, when you know we nominate people that are just relitigating the 2020 election or talking about you know stuff that people aren't focused on, you have no chance to win. And our nominee for governor got the same vote Donald Trump got, which was not very good. Governor, we came across a picture from 2014. Uh, this is when you were governor-elect. What would you say to governor-elect Larry Hogan about what awaited him over the next eight years? Well, first of all, I think I would say Governor Hogan looks a lot thinner and has great hair. Uh, looking <laughs> My at that, eyesight is better, <laughs> Looking too. at that picture. Uh, yeah, I, I got the new sleek look during my cancer treatment, and I put on a few pounds with all the stress but, uh, and probably the good eating here at Government House. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, uh, what would I say back then? I would, uh, you know, I, I was full of uh, optimism and enthusiasm. And look, I, I feel as if we actually did all of the things we said we were going to do. But I certainly would have uh, warned the guy about what was going to be ahead with the riots and the cancer and the, you know, the worst global pandemic in 100 years, if I knew. Yeah, they say hindsight is 50-50. Governor Larry Hogan, thanks for joining On the Hill. Thank you, Tom.